All right. Yeah, Shalawam Israel. Okay, I'm the brother Shaquat Gabar from the Great Millstone, South Carolina, maintenance camp. Coming at you with another quick lesson. And before I get into my lesson, as always, I want to start off giving all praises unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Raka, Kodash. Second, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone that teach and rule well. And citation also to the fellow laborers that's in the ministry, that's pushing the word of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, in all truth and sincerity. And the um, Israelite, Israelite foreigners that scattered amongst the other nations, okay? And that may look like you're a typical heathen of another nation, but if your bloodline goes back to Negro, Latino, and Native American descent, you are considered an Israelite according to the bloodline and of the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So shalom to you brothers and sisters as well that scattered worldwide and that's in the faith and exalt in the name of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to get into a quick lesson. And the title of this lesson is going to be the Jakeover, okay? Okay, meaning, you know, the takeover. Because that's what we're about to enter into, man. Okay, we enter into the time of who the world calls Christ, Yahweh Shai, his second return. Okay, and before Yahweh Shai return, we're going to go through the trials or tribulations of Jacob's trouble, the downfall of America, and the downfall of these Edomites, which are the so called white race, start with the elites on down. Okay, as known as the uh, Illuminati, so called. Okay, but we're in the midst of this place going down and the destruction of America that's going to come by the way of thermonuclear fire. And at that time, you're going to have Yahweh Shai returning to deliver the elect that, that's going to deliver the elect from out of that destruction, from out of here, America, and wherever the elect is uh, scattered, okay? Because the elect is scattered worldwide. But after that, it's going to be the time of the kingdom of the nation of Israel, us, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, okay? And by default, Yahweh Shai kingdom and us being joint heirs is going to be set up here upon the earth. And we're going to rule, okay? We're going to rule over this planet earth and over you heathens, starting with Esau, Edom, beginning with their elites, okay? And the scriptures prove that. So, the, so now we're in the time of the Lord raising up his men by this word, through the internet and setting up his prophets through the ministry on the highways and byways to push this word to gather the elect. And these heathens start with Esau, Edom, these elites, they know. Okay, but in their pride, they think they're going to overtake Yahweh Shai and the angels and keep us in captivity with this whole new world order they're trying to uh, perform. But it's going to fail. Okay, as we get in that time of them trying to establish their new world order agenda. But the outcome is going to be us eventually ruling over them through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the lesson. And I'm going to start off with Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. And I pray that this lesson be edifying to the ones that the ones that's out there listening. Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. And it says, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Okay, and that's coming into the times that we're about to enter into now, in the near future, okay? And like I say, man, we're coming to the verge of the downfall of these Edomites and the destruction of their main stronghold when it comes to their kingdom, Babylon, America, okay? Babylon the Great. And the Yahweh Shah is going to return and set up our kingdom here on the earth after this World War III and after Yahweh Shah uh, established uh, the kingdom by delivering the elect by the way of the chariots with the world called UFOs, then it's going to be a takeover, man, a transition of power. Okay? Well, let me read that again. Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, and we are the saints, only us, the Israelites. And it says, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever, and possess Okay, to take control, man, to conquer. They said the kingdom forever and ever. 
the kingdom re represent dominion. Okay? And our kingdom is going to be an everlasting kingdom. And when you take something, it's going by force. It's going to happen by force. And that's going to happen when Yahweh shall return once again to establish the kingdom here on the earth. Now, let me go to the book of Daniel. Um, chapter 2, verse 44. And it reads, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. And it's going to what? Us taking over, man. Starting with Yahweh Shai getting his glory when he returned with the host of angels and delivered the elect once again and set up the kingdom here on the earth. And we're going to consume all these kingdoms, meaning that all these nations, because what they got to talk of uh, what the Chinese, they coming in power next, the Russians, okay, which they're Edomites, the Chinese, they're Moabites, but all of them are heathens. They don't think that we're going to rule, okay? They're not having in their mind that the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans is going to rule, okay? They look at us being on the bottom forever, but when Yahweh shall return, the Messiah, and redeem the elect of the nation of Israel, the 144,000 and that one-third, which is the first fruits, that's going to be the uh, foundation of the kingdom. Once it's established, it's going to be a takeover, man. Okay? The Lord is going to give his men those immortality bodies. Okay? Those superhuman bodies that we're going to receive. We're going to be righteous forevermore. When the start of the new covenant in our inward part. Okay? Because soon the elect is delivered into, to, in, into those chariots, those ships. The elect is going to be changed. Okay, and we're going to have those super angelic bodies, like Superman. And we're going to have spiritual power, man. And with that spiritual power, we're going to be able to go around the earth, wherever the, 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 the heathens at, when they're going to be in their hideouts. And it's going to be a takeover, man. There's going to be a transition of power, new authority, okay, on the earth. New management on the earth. And that's going to be given to the elect of the nation of Israel through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And that's what these Edomites of these elites are afraid of. But like I said, they boast and brag into their weapons, their riches, their technology. And through their pride, they think they're never going to be taken down. But they're going to be disappointed in that time. Okay? So it says... What it shall consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever, meaning that our kingdom is going to be an everlasting kingdom. And it's going to be set up through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai being the head, okay, right along with King David, because right now the Lord is building up the house of David, which represents the remnant, another way of saying the elect, okay. And David is going to be back on the throne to be our king under Yahweh Shai and the rest of the apostles. And the prophets, the elect. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to the book of Isaiah, because I mentioned that and Yahweh Shah is gonna be the lead way to the kingdom of Israel being established here on the earth. And it's all it's proven all throughout the scriptures that Yahweh Shah is the one. But you got individuals of our people. Saying that the saying that Yahweh Shah is not to be worshipped. He didn't did any miracles, the chariots, which so-called which are so-called so-called UFOs, as they call them, don't exist. Okay, and that's a category for the non-believers, which are the two-thirds, even those amongst Israel that claiming they're Israelites, but bringing in false doctrines. Okay, because according to the scriptures, two-thirds of our people, they're gonna be destroyed, man, here in America. Okay, the ones of calling yourself Israelites and, and false prophets and in the wrong spirit and ones of our people that's all into the ways of this world and they're upholding the system. Two thirds of our people, according to the scripture, they're going to be put to death and they're going to have to come back in the kingdom being the offspring or the children of the, the elect of the nation of Israel, the ones that's going to be redeemed. But let me continue on. This is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, 
unto us a son is given. And that's Yahweh Shai. That's what Isaiah speaking about. Okay, just going into the, uh, the, the times that we're in now. This is a prophecy that Isaiah saw or spoke of over 2,000 years ago that's playing out now, coming into fulfilling now. And it says, and the government shall be upon the shoulder. The government represent what? The kingdom. Okay. That's what it's going into. It's going to be the government or the kingdom of us, the Israelites. And Yahweh Shah being the head. And it says, and the government, and it says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be uplifted. Okay, because our kingdom is going to be a, a, a kingdom that's going to be exalted, man, here on the earth. And it says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his, and his name shall be called Wonderful and Counselor, the Mighty Power, or the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So that's what Yahweh Shah is coming to bring, man. He coming to exalt the kingdom of Israel here on the earth, man. So we got to give praises and reverence and worship to Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, okay? For Yahweh Shai is coming in the, the, the name and the power of his father. And the heavenly father, Yahweh, gave all power unto Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai is going to be the one that's going to give the power uh, to the elect, the authority of the elect to rule, man. So that's it on that. I'm going to get another scripture. Going into how Yahweh Shai is going to be the head of the kingdom and the elect being joint heirs. Now, this is Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. And it reads, The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Okay, and Judah is the head tribe of the nation of Israel, which are the so called Negroes today, the real Jews. Okay, and that's the tribe that Yahweh Shai came out of okay that's the seed or the bloodline he came out of the tribe of judah and it says the scepter shall not depart from judah nor the lawgiver between his feet and that scepter represent what rulership a kingdom because that's what a, a, a king hold in his hand a scepter okay and it says the scepter shall not depart from judah nor the lawgiver between his feet okay because in our kingdom the law is going to be established, man. Okay, and it's going to, like I say, the new covenant is going to be the laws in our inward part, and our kingdom is going to be ruled forever through righteousness by being guided, guided through the laws, statutes, and commandments. And it says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And Shiloh is another title for Yahweh Shai, which means peace. Okay, we just now read in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, that one of the titles that Isaiah um, gave him or stated was what? The Prince of Peace. So Shiloh is another way saying peace. And it says, and, on, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So that's what Yahweh shall come to gather, the elect. For what? The rule. Okay? Because when we tell our people, you know, salvation is for us. He's going to deliver us from the hands of our enemies. But right along with salvation is going to be authority, rulership, okay, dominion here on the earth. And that's what Yahweh Shah is coming to bring and give to the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. So he's gathering them through the word of Yahweh Shah now, through the ministry of the prophets that he's setting up. So this is what time we're coming into, man. Some beautiful times. Okay? Of course, you know, we have to get through the hardship and the, the trials and tribulations. But the Lord's going to um, guide his elect and cover his elect through the times of Jacob's trouble. In the time of Esau, Edom come in as a flood. as he's about ready to do now. Okay? But that's just a, a, a sign uh, uh, closer to the downfall of this place. And Yahweh Shah returning to establish the kingdom. So that's it on that. Now let me go to Revelation. Chapter 19. Verse 11. And it read. This is Revelation chapter 19 verse 11. 
And this is what the, the near future of prophecy that John seen, okay, that's about to take place here in these days now, man. And it says, and I saw heaven open and behold, a white horse and a white horse represent those chariots, okay? White mean pure, purified, and horse mean power. That's what it means, okay? So the horse is another way saying, a white horse or horses or chariots, it's another way saying, symbolic for the so-called UFOs, what the world call them, okay? Because you got individuals out there in Israel that don't believe that the so-called UFOs are the chariots. And you had this individual amongst uh, one body in Yahweh Shai, and they got the nerves to call the Israelite organization that, but they not the fact that the so-called UFOs are actually the chariots, okay? And another way of saying um, so-called UFOs is horses, okay? Not actually horses, as the uh, head of that organization said, okay, make mockery, but a horse represent power. That's what it's going into. So it says, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, which represent the chariot that Yahweh Shai going to come back in. And it says, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doeth judge and make war. So Yahweh Shai coming back to judge and make war. Not what this world teaches when it comes to Christ, what they call him. Okay, they're saying that he's coming back to bring love to everybody, to all nations. But right here, it says he's coming back to bring judgment and make war. Because that's what he's going to do. Okay, when the times that we enter into, mainly uh, in war, during the time of World War III, when the nations are going to be fighting against each other, and Yahweh Shah is going to return and fight against them, intervene in the war, invade this place by the chariots, okay, the angels, him and the angels, to bring war and to bring salvation to the elect. Because simultaneously, you're going to have those thermonuclear missiles being launched, and the elect is going to be delivered from those chariots when those missiles are going to be launched to bring the destruction to America. Okay? So Yahweh Shah is coming back to make to bring war as well. And it says, verse 12, his eyes were as the flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. Okay? Let me read it again. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Okay? Represent his fury, his wrath. And on his head were many crowns. Okay? Represent when Yahweh Shah returned, he's going to take down all these nations. Start with Esau, Edom, on down to the Chinese, the Arabs, the Japanese, the Hawaiians, the Samoans, the East Indians, the Iranians, the Russians, which they are Edomites. Okay, all, all you heathen nations that's not a Negro, Latino, Native American descent, that's not a Israelites, okay, the, the original Gentiles. The heathens, okay, the Lord is coming back to bring them down and rule over them, okay, by setting up the kingdom of Israel, okay? So that's what it's going into when it said his head were, were many, and on his head were many crowns. And it says, he had a name written that no man knew of but himself. And he was clothed with the vexure dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of God. Another title, okay? And that dip in blood represent what? The, the destruction of the many casualties and bloodshed that Yahweh Shah is going to cause by the way of those chariots, okay? Because those chariots are going to come with fire, okay? And it says, and he was clothed with the vexure dip in blood, and his name is called the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven follow him upon white horses, meaning the rest of the angels. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he and he shall rule them with the rod of iron. That's the kingdom. After Yahweh shot, um, bring destruction to these nations, and the destruction of America and certain other places. Okay, certain other uh, lands that's going to be destroyed, and the land of Israel is going to be one of them, because you got a bunch of imposters in that land. And that land is defiled due, due to Amalek, one of the sons of Edom ruling. And that land is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles as well, by the hands of Russia. And that's prophecy. But that land is going to be cleansed by that fire just for us, 
the nation of Israel to establish our land again and build up the kingdom, okay? Because that's our land. And, and you heed this, that's going to be reserved after the thermonuclear uh, war and Yahweh Shah bringing judgment and the deliverance of the elect. After that, you're going to go into captivity, okay? As I keep mentioning, man, that's your future. And it's going to start with you at least. And the rest of you heathens, that's going to be reserved. And it says, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron. That's that um, kingdom being set up. Yahweh Shah and the, and the nation of Israel, starting with the elect, being joint heirs, ruling on the earth over you nations. And it says, and he tried if the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty. So Yahweh, Yahweh Shah is coming in the might of Yahweh, man. So that's what we're coming into, man. And that's beautiful, man. That's the day that we're waiting for. Because these, um, these heathens, man, they don't think that we're going to rule. And hell, at this time, two-thirds of our people don't see that we're going to rule. Okay, that's why the Lord call them home-born slaves. Okay? Those that trust in oppression. Because that's what they're doing, man, trusting in this place. And when Esau go about establishing the new world order with that MOTB, which is the the CHIP, hey, two thirds of our people are gonna be right along with it, and they're gonna be destroyed. But those that take that that MOTB is gonna be destroyed by those thermonuclear missiles. Okay, and once again, they're gonna to have to come back in the kingdom, being the children of the elect, which are the first fruits. Um, that's it on that. Now let me get Revelation chapter twenty one, cause like I mentioned, you're gonna have the elect being beamed up. But after a period of time, after the you know the smoke clear, the fire died, dies down for those thermonuclear missiles and those chariots. Okay, because the elect is going to be delivered, beamed up into those chariots from the destruction. Then they're going to come back down out of those chariots with that glorious power of that immortality, of that, that super angelic body. Okay? Then, it, then after that, man, it's going to really be fun time for the nation of Israel. Okay, because after that, we're going to establish order through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Shah here on the earth. And the first order of many that the Lord is going to give his men in that time to gather up you heathens. So let me go ahead and get Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth represent new rulership. Okay, because right now this is Esau heaven. This is his rulership. Okay, and he's over the earth right now. But, but John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth represent the rulership of, uh, of Yahweh Shai and the nation of Israel being established here upon the earth. And it says, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea going into the downfall of Esau, Edom and these heathens. OK, their rulership is going to pass away. And, and when Yahweh Shai returned and set up the rulership of the nation of Israel, verse 20, verse 2. And it says, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Okay, and it's going to the men, the men, women, and the children that's going to be placed back down on the earth, being brought back down from out of those chariots. That's what it's going to, not actually a, a city. Okay, and the city, what makes up a city? The citizens, the people. And it says what? The New Jerusalem represent the elect. Of the nation of Israel coming off those chariots to establish the kingdom here on the earth through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And it says, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride undone for her husband. Okay? So the Yahweh Shai, meaning that he's going to set up the uh, kingdom of uh, Israel on the earth. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, Israelite men. Because that's the only nation that the Lord is dealing with. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, his people, Israelites. And Yahweh himself be with them and be their God. So that's what's going to happen, man, when the kingdom is established. There's going to be the nation of Israel ruling through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay? And that's going to be the time with Esau Edom. Is going to be in hiding, okay, those elites. They're going to hide from the destruction, okay. Well, basically, they're going to be reserved, okay, but they're going to be hiding at that time 
when it comes to Yahweh Shah wrath and those thermonuclear missiles being launched, and they're going to be in those bunkers, okay, such as, you know, the underground bunkers, the bunkers that's in the mountains, okay, the scriptures talk about that, how they're going to be hiding from the destruction, how they actually got cities underground, and, and, you know, and in the in the um, mountains, out of space, underwater, but Lord gonna have those in them, have them in those places, those places, just to be reserved for um captivity. Cause the elect is gonna gather those heathens or those elites out of those places where they're gonna be hiding at. Okay. Now let me get this since I mentioned that. Cause after the destruction of America, they're gonna be reserved and they still gonna be wicked. Cause Esau is the wicked and these heathens. They right along with them. They're not going to repent because it's not for them to repent. And the kingdom of heaven is only for the nation of Israel. Now, let me get this. This is on Revelation chapter 6, verse 15. And it says, let me start at verse 14, 13, 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a, of a mighty wind that's going into that nuclear destruction and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is scrolled together. I mean, a head and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Every mountain and island were moved out of their places and going into that, the destruction of those thermonuclear missiles that's going to be hitting the earth. Verse 15, the point and the kings of the earth and great men and rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, going into those bunkers, man, those shelters. That they're going to be reserved. They're going to be hiding at, man, during the time of those thermonuclear missiles. And that's evidence, man. You can look up um, bunkers and uh, uh, shelters, fallout shelters, nuclear shelters, okay, of these elites, how they're preparing themselves. They already had for years, okay? Because they're going to be in those shelters, those bunkers, to be hiding out. When the, when the Third World War happened and the, and the nuclear war take place, that's prophecy. Verse 16, And say unto the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So that's how they're going to be, man. Okay? Hiding from the destruction that Yahweh Bashim is going to bring by those chariots and those thermonuclear missiles. But that's going to be for them only to be reserved for captivity. <clears throat> and it says, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who, and who shall be able to stand? Okay, so in that time, like I say, when those chariots beam back down the elect on the earth, one of the orders that Yahweh Shah is going to give his men is to gather the heathen nations start with the elites of Edom. Okay, the ones that are ruling now, that causing all um destruction and you know you see you know these elites, man, they the ones that's in power, causing all this mayhem, all this wickedness, all this uncivil unrest. So they're gonna be the first ones to go into captivity, and the Lord's gonna use his men to do that. They gather them up. This is Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, say the Lord, and they shall fish them. And that's what the elect of the nation of Israel is doing now. Okay, start with the, the prophets through the ministry. The Lord has set up his men, okay, to fish the elect by going out there teaching. Okay, by putting up videos on the highways, the bot and highways and byways and sit down videos. Okay, to gather the elect, the fishing. And it says, and after what I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them. And that's going into the elect. Okay, those same individuals, okay, or the, or the, or the men of the Lord, or the prophets. Okay, that's going to be turned into hunters. Okay, giving that spiritual power, man. And part of that hunting is going to be gathering these uh, uh, leaks and the rest of these heathens out of those um, bunkers and those shelters. Where they're going to be hiding at in the time of the kingdom being established, if they're going into captivity. And it says, And I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain, from every hill, 
and out of the holes of the rocks. Okay, represent, you know, we're going to take over, okay, and take all these heathens down. The mountains, the government, the hills represent the small government and out of the holes of the rocks. Okay, wherever the institutions are at, okay, but also represent them actually being in mountains, being sheltered in the, in the holes of the rocks and different mountains, uh, uh, um, on the ground bunkers, like I say, space uh, stations, space shuttles, underwater, water, underwater uh, stations, because they're going to be hiding. And, and actually, Esau got that technology because that's the blessing that the Lord gave him to be able to construct these things. Is to stay in, okay? But they're going to be pulled out out of those places where they're going to be hiding at and be thrown into captivity. So that's it on that. And it's all proven through the scriptures, man. Precept upon precept. Upon precept. Now let me get this. This is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 49. Verse 23. And it says, I'll start off at verse 22. This say the Lord God, behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and going into the heathens, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring their sons in their in their arms, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and their daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. Okay, going to them being in servitude under us. Okay, these heathens. Verse 23. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. Okay, start with these elites. They're going to be servitude under us, man. That's part of the takeover, man, or the jakeover. And it says, And they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust off thy feet. Meaning that they're going to be in a low condition. They're going to be under us. They're going to be servants under us. They're not going to actually be Licking the dust off our feet, feet, meaning they're gonna be in a low state, okay? Cause you got individuals amongst Israel that use the scripture to have an Edomite here in America, or Edomites that pass by them on the highways and byways to bow down to them and kiss their feet, kiss their boot, okay? Which you know that's folly, okay? And that's vain in it, at the end of the day. But it's actually going to when these elites start with these elites of Esau, Edom. And the rest of them heathens buy down to us because we're going to be in rulership and they're going to be in a low state and be in service unto us. That's what it's going into. And it says, and they shall lick up the dust off their feet and thou, sh and thou shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. For they shall not be, a, for they, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. And that's the elect. The elect is waiting for Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. For that power to come, man. For that salvation and the authority of the kingdom to be in the possession of the elect's hand and to rule over these uh, nations. Okay? So that's what we're waiting for, man. Now pray you how about you, Shah, that I'm part of that mighty number. Okay, that election. Now let me go to another precept going into how we're going to put the chains on these elites, man. Now this is Psalms chapter 149 verse 6. And it says, let the high praises of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai be in thy mouth and the two-edged sword in their hands. And that's literally, we really literally in that time going to have a two-edged sword, two-edged sword, okay? And it says, let the high praises of the Most High, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, be in their mouth. And we're going to glorify Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai in that time. Okay, we glorify the Lord now. Okay, how much more with salvation and we're able to get our hands on our enemies, man. On the top chief of our enemies. Okay, the, the, the elites of Esau, Edom, and the heathens on down. So they're going to be all nothing but praising Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai with that two edged sword in our hand. And it says, verse 7, to execute vengeance upon the heathens. So that's going to be the time of vengeance, man. When Yahweh Shai allowed his elect men to take those elites and those heathens down. That's going to be the vengeance of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah that's going to come upon our enemies. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punish upon the people. To bind, to, to bend, okay, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetter, 
fetters of iron. So that's going into captivity, man. Just as Esau, during the time of slavery of the Negroes, Latino, Native Americans, how, how he had us in captivity and put that yoke on us, put those chains on us, no fetter of irons. Okay, and the Lord's going to return the favor on them. Okay, and still to this day, we're in captivity, being ruled by these elites and the rest of these heathens. But when Yahweh Shai transitioned the power into the hands of the Israelites and to us, and you nation's going to feel that chain around your neck, man. And that fetter of irons around your wrists, your ankles, your waist, all you heathens, man, starting with Esau, Edom. So that's what it's going into. And this is biblical prophecy, man. And the words of the Lord are faithful and true. So it's going to take place. And it says, verse 9, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Pray ye, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. And it says, to execute upon them the judgment that's written. So it's written, and it's soon going to uh, happen, okay? Because you nature is going to go into captivity for a thousand years, okay? That's that's in the near future. That's what time we're approaching. That's why you're seeing all hell breaking loose. That's why you're seeing the, the rising of the nation of Israel, of the, the elect, and his word being pushed all throughout the four corners of the earth, okay? Because we come into the downfall of you elites, of Esau, Edom, and you heathens. And the rising of Yahweh Shah's salvation and the kingdom being established. And you devils, hey, you got to pay for a thousand years. And you're going to pay by the way of captivity. So that's it on that. And all the riches that you have, hey, the Lord is going to give it to us. Let me get this. This is Job chapter 20, verse 15. And it says, he has swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. Yahweh shall cast them out of his belly. Okay, and that's going into uh, your elites that, that, that got all the things of the earth, man, all the, the, the finest resources, material things, the best of everything that you don't stole by deceit, by bloodshed through your blessing the sword. But in that time, Yahweh Bashim al Shah is going to give us back the earth in our possession. Including everything, okay, including you heathens and all the riches that you heathens have, starting with Esau, Edom, okay, you're going to vomit them up and they're going to be transitioned into our possession, okay, and we're going to have that and, and, and pleasures or more. Everything's going to be increased, man, for the blessing that Yahweh Bashim al Shah is going to give the nation of Israel. Let me see. Verse um, 16. He shall suck the poison of abs. The viper's tongue shall slay him. He shall not see the rivers and the floods and the brooks of honey and butter. They're like going to your downfall, man. You're going to that low state. Okay, on the bottom once again. Verse 18. That which he labored for shall he restore and shall not swallow it down. According to his substance shall he restoration be and he shall not rejoice therein. So you're going to be all that riches and all the things that you have, all the fancy things, the material things, the, you know, the, the high places of the earth, okay, where you dwell at, that got good resources, all that's going to be taken from you, man. And you're going to be on the bottom, okay, all you heathens, okay? And we're going to have that in our possession through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Now, let me get this. I'm going to go to the book of Job. Chapter 27, verse 16. And it says, Though he heap up silver as dust and prepare remnant as the clay, going into all the things that you have, man, all the wealthiest and material things that you have, okay, all the resources where you have, lands, cattle, whatever you name, man, you saw got the fatness of the earth because this is his time to rule, okay? But all that's going to be taken away from him. And it says, though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare remnant as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on and the innocent shall divide the silver. And that's going to us, man. Okay, we're the just and we're innocent. Starting with the elect in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim al the Lord is going to forgive us for our sins. Okay, and we're going to be made perfect and being that righteous state of mind 
through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashimel Shah. So in that time, and we're going to take over the earth and we're going to rule. And all the riches that you heathens have, we're going to take from you and we're going to divide it amongst ourselves, man. Okay? And that's the, 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 the blessing of Yahweh Bashimel Shah that we're waiting for, man. That we're longing, longing for. Waiting patient, hasting. And we see these things are coming, man. Okay, we see the days of Esau, Edom, time running out. Okay, and like I say, we got to go through the trials and tribulations. Hey, but what Paul say, this, this light, light affliction is not compared to the uh, everlasting glory that we're going to receive forever, man. Okay, because you devil's going to be done. Okay, and our kingdom, man, is going to be forever lasting. And that's going to be a long thousand years for you heathens, especially you Edomites. And you Edomites that perish on this side, okay, you're going to have to come back. And you Edomites and the rest of you heathens that perish on this side, you got to come back. You're going to come back in the kingdom through the offspring of, 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 of your family bloodline that's going to be reserved during that time. And you're going to inherit captivity for a thousand years. So that's it on that. Now I'll get a couple of more scriptures and uh, close it out. Okay, so that's what we're waiting for, man. And it's all about endurance to the end. The ones that's in the faith, the truth, to see your brethren. Okay, because that's what we're looking for, to be part of that hopeful elect and to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai when he set up the rule of the nation of Israel here on the earth. Let me see. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. And it says, And he that overcome and keepeth my works to the end, what's that? You know, doing his work and having faith, okay? The ones that's uh, uh, praying to be part of that hopeful elect and giving diligence to make that calling and election sure. And it says, And he that overcome and keep my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, rulership. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron. As the vessel of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. So we're going to break these nations down, man, physically. Okay? That's going to be part of the judgment, part of the vengeance, the payback that the Lord is going to give his elect men to um, bring upon the enemies. Of, of the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Shah, which are our enemies. And I will give him the morning star, which represents this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. And that's going into the elect. Because only the elect is going to receive the Spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shah. Okay? And we're going to rule over you nations, man. And, and, and hey, and once of our people that come back into the kingdom, the two-thirds, for that thousand year period, hey, they even gonna come back and have authority over you heathens, man. And they're gonna be, you know, they they're gonna have the spirit, cause they're gonna be righteous, fully righteous, all of us. And they're gonna get you back for all the wickedness that you done against them, man. Okay, the ones of our people that perish on this side and trust in this place. Uh, let me um close out with this. This is Revelation chapter thirteen, verse nine. If any man have an ear, let him hear. That meaning understanding. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And that's what's going to happen to you, the elites. Starting with your elites and you Arabs, your original Africans, which are Hamites, and the rest of you nations. Because all y'all played, played a role in our downfall into our captivity. And Esau been the head of it. Okay, so it say he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Okay, going into slavery. And that's soon to come. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Hey, bloodshed. You share the blood of us as a nation. So the Lord's going to return the favor. Okay. And it says, here is the patient in the faith of the saints. And that's what the elect is waiting for, man. That's the patient. Okay. To, uh, waiting for the Yahweh Bashim Shah to deliver us and give us the rule over our enemies. Okay. And praise Yahweh Bashim Shah. For establishing the kingdom, okay, that's going to be set up forever, man. So that's what we're looking for, man. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the lesson here, and I pray that this lesson is edifying to the ones out there listening. Okay, until the next time, I'm gonna give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim.
Rakah Kodash, double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone that teach and rule well, a salutation also to the fellow laborers and the believers that scattered worldwide, exalting and having the faith, and having faith and exalting the name of Yahweh Bashmiah Shah. Until the next time, Shalom.